Now let's do the same for the second one. Let me close this up. Import the protocol for the coin cap. And let's have a look. Now, I mentioned that this example has a bit of extra information. We needed to add a key. Now, how do I know I have to add a key in uh, my session itself? Well, before you start developing, you need to know how to interact with your API. The first use case was very simple. I'm just going to go to a website and that's it. For this one, we have chosen a specific open source API, which you can find. Uh, and we wanted to retrieve a specific listing. So you can find uh, the information over here and the, this is the get we want to execute. Now the documentation states uh, to make a connection, we require a key. We need to send out the key as a header. So you can find this over here. The API key will be passed along by parameter number three. This is our URL. This is the uh, API request that we want to send out. As you saw, we have a possibility of multiple. Uh, we could say I would like to get the new, or I would like to get the latest, the historical, whatever call you want to send out. That's our URL. Session definition is very similar. We have our session itself, which has a unique ID. We set up a connection in there. What will be our request? It will be a get with the URL. We have an extra header because in this case, we require to pass along a specific key. The key is passed by parameter number three. Have a quick look on parameter number three. Let's go to the parameters itself. This is our access key and it's just textual. This is all defined in the documentation of the API. This is what we need to pass along. So we're going to fill in that key value and then we can send out the request itself. The response, same principle. We're going to store the status code in parameter 100, the response itself into parameter 200. Keep in mind, you can choose your parameter IDs or what fits for your logic. So when we go to data miner, we can have a look on the second example. We have already our access key. When we hit send, we have our status response and we receive something. Now imagine that we're not going to fill in or an incorrect access key. Let's send out our request. Well, in this case, you can see our status code has changed and we have a message in here. This already shows some opportunity. We can use the status code to validate something. We can even use this to validate if we should pass our information into our quick action or not. This can be of very high value when you want to reduce the load on your system. Remember, every bit counts, so we can say, I'm not going to process the information whenever I receive a specific status code. When it's okay, then I'm going to pass it along. Let's have a quick look or summary on the code itself. So we had our uh, button to send out our requests. Let's go to this one. From this change, a write parameter always requires a change or it always has a change. So this trigger will always run as soon as we hit the button. It will run a specific action. This action will, let's zoom into this a bit, uh, will execute a group. Now what happens in the background, I will show you in a nice diagram in a bit. What happens, it will move it to a queue. This is all the stuff that you will need to do and I will make sure that you have different post-its with little to-dos on it. Well, these are all the post-its. It could be a pile of post-its that you have to execute. So I'm just going to add it to that pile. And I can change the order. I could say, well, this thing that we will need to do has a higher priority. And that's why we have different types of executes. And in this case, we're going to say execute one now. You can already try and 
realize what this is, uh, only add it once. This specific group should only be added once in that file and add it on the top so it will be executed right now. Basically, as soon as you can. This is the first thing you should do. The group itself contains the session. This is our to-do list. Remember, we can have multiple sessions, um, multiple things you would like to do. Uh, remember, we had, for instance, here, we had the historical. Maybe every hour I would like to retrieve the historical. And when I hit the button, I want to get the latest. So I could make a timer, a new group with another session, so it can run that historical every hour. In case it needs to happen uh, when I click on the button as well, I can just add the historical session in here as well. The session defines everything that we require to set up that request to make that command to our API, and the response will be retrieved in a parameter. Just as simple as that, we're going to pass whatever is returned into one parameter so we can process it later on. You don't need to define anything specific in here to move it to a table right away. We will process it, we will validate it, process it, send it to the place you need. 